I'm John Marino, Senior Editor with The Deal Covering Private Equity, and we're joined today by Jim Fulton with Cooley. He's one of their partners. We're going to be talking tech this morning. I want to use eBay as our first example. What's big in tech is no longer what's big in M&A. Uh, eBay, which has made, I guess, a, a few terrific big spending decisions. They went out and bought Shopping.com. Um, they're not buying a lot smaller. They're not, I guess, pushing as much into the big spending buys. And they bought Shuttle, which is an e-commerce startup. It does same-day delivery, and it raised less than $10 million. That's really not big by their standards, but it's going to be very big for their um, e eBay same delivery home shopping play. What else is kind of guiding the, the M&A tech scene? Why don't companies want to, it seems, spend as much for big startups right now? Well, it, it, the market for these kind of technology companies ebbs and flows. You'll see in times where there's a lot of certainty and companies have their strategic plan and, and they're going along it, the big acquisitions do make sense and, and you see people doing them. There's other times, and I think, I think right now both the economic uncertainty as well as some of the political uncertainty, companies don't want to actually go out there and make the big bet until there's a little bit more stability on them. So I don't, it, like anything, it ebbs and it flows and we happen to be in a down M&A market right now, both in terms of deal size as well as in terms of number of deals. So a $10 million tuck-in acquisition to enhance a product line, a much easier thing to get through your, your CEO and through your board than it is a bet the company type acquisition. Right. And, and, and while M&A is in hot, IPOs are white hot. Rocket Fuel is just one example. Obviously, the biggest example maybe of the year coming out this week is going to be Twitter. What, what's guiding the IPO scene for tech right now? It's so big. Well, it's the appetite of the investors. And you're in a low interest rate environment, which is pushing a lot of money into the equities. Um, people are worried about interest rates rising, so they're shying away from bonds. And so investors who are looking for uh, gains are having to put it in different asset classes, um, whether it's technology IPOs like Twitter, um, FireEye, or you know, on the, on the life sciences scene. I mean, it's the, it's right. the hottest biotech IPO market ever. Uh, that I'm aware of, and uh, it, it's just amazing. But it really is being driven by investor demand. Um, you know, the venture capital industry will tell you, you know, we've got the supply, we just need the demand. And I think we're now seeing the demand catch up with the supply that we've had for the last five, six, seven years. And it seems like also venture capital as an industry, as an asset class, might get shaken up a little bit by crowdfunding. Now, obviously, investors have an opportunity to bet earlier on companies that they all may, also may bet later on. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's it's too early to tell really what effect crowdfunding is going to have on the venture industry as a whole. I, I actually think the venture industry is suffering more from um, the institutional investors souring on it as an investment class because the returns haven't been there. But I think um, a, a venture, it, it got too big, and it got bigger than you could deploy in the venture capital category. And what we've seen over the last decade is what I call a right-sizing of the venture industry. Um, venture is nowhere near dead. Um, it's just being reinventing itself. And I think looking at these healthy IPOs that are coming out and you start looking at the returns right. for the funds that were formed in 06, 07, 08, and, and I, you know, I know this because I'm investors in those funds, that they're, they're performing quite nicely now. Um, and it remains to be seen if the institutional investors will continue to, you know, plunk down the right amount of money into the asset class over and over and over again. I think they will. I think they will too because well, we might see a lot more hot IPOs coming out in 2014 that, that are going to be validating VC as an asset class. Thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. I'm John Marino with The Deal. Thanks.